Hello everyone and welcome. In this video I'm going to be taking a look at the Magic Keyboard for the all new M4 iPad Pro. Now this retails for £349 and is available in two colours. You've got either this one that I've got here which is the, the black version uh, and they also do a white version so you can choose whichever one um, you'd like perhaps to match the colour of the iPad you've chosen. Uh, in my case, I went for a space black iPad, so I've gone for the black keyboard to match. So here's the box, um, just a standard sort of plain sort of box with the an, an image of the keyboard itself on the front. Um, and then on the back, we've just got a couple of, um, a few diagrams just to show some of the positions uh, and the functionality of the uh, keyboard itself. So we've got these two pull tabs to uh, take off, so let me just pull these off. And we'll flip the box back round and we can now lift the lid and we are greeted straight away with the keyboard itself wrapped up in a paper protective sleeve so we can take that out and we'll lift the um, move the box out of the way um, you don't get anything else in the box it's just the keyboard um, so let's take a look at the keyboard itself so we can start by pulling this tab um, try and do this properly how does this come off? Try to pull it out without damaging the packaging. There we go. And then it just comes away and we are left with just the keyboard. So if we now open this up, we have another piece of protective cardboard here, um, which we can place to the side. And here we have the keyboard. So let's start by taking a look at the exterior design of the keyboard. So as you can see, we have a, in this case, I've got the black version and we have this nice soft uh, silicon sort of rubberized material, which is the same as what we had previously on the previous Magic Keyboard that was available. We have the same material on the bottom here and um, this is nice and soft to touch, so it's uh, quite pleasant to carry around. We've also got our camera cutout for the camera bump on the iPad, as well as our landscape Apple logo, which when the keyboard is open is obviously um, facing the right way up. Now, if we take a look at the back here, you can see we've got our, our metal hinge. I believe this is aluminium, and it's colour matched to whichever keyboard you have. So I've got the space or the black keyboard here. So this actually matches the space black color on the uh, space black iPad Pro. Um, the hinge itself is um, quite nice. It's fairly stiff, um, but it's got some nice sort of weighting to it. And one of the nice features that is incorporated into this hinge is a USB-C port. So if you take a look just here, there is a USB-C port, um, which is which allows you to charge your iPad by plugging directly into the keyboard rather than having your uh, cable sort of um, dangling a few inches above the, um, the surface that it's on, um, which would happen if you plug the cable into here. So that's a nice feature and certainly based on what I've experienced, there doesn't seem to be much of a difference in terms of charging speeds between whether you plug it into the keyboard or whether you plug your cable into the iPad. So that's definitely something that will come in handy for a lot of people who, especially if you find yourself charging your iPad whilst using it. Now, if we take a look at the inside, for the, the main difference with this keyboard compared to the previous one is the palm rest. Now this is now an aluminium rather than the previous design, which was effectively the same material that we found on the outside of this keyboard. So it's now aluminium and it's color matched to whichever keyboard you get. So in this case, I've got the black keyboard and this aluminium finish matches the space black on the iPad Pro in space black. 
You can also get a silver keyboard, which is obviously a silver finish that is very familiar to any um, MacBook user who's had a silver MacBook. Now, the design of the keys is going to be very familiar to anybody who's used uh, any Apple keyboard before, with the same sort of font and same overall key size as something like a Magic keyboard that you'd get with an iMac. So it should be very familiar to type on, and the key travel is actually quite nice. It's got, a, I think, it feels like a, a solid millimetre of travel. So you should have nice tactile feedback whilst you're typing. You'll also notice around the edge of the keyboard we have a rubber gasket, which is in black here. I don't know whether it's white on the other keyboard, um, but for, for me it's black. And this helps to stop the glass from making direct contact with the aluminium enclosure of this keyboard. So it can help protect the display and stop you from accidentally damaging it when you open and close the keyboard. The keyboard is also backlit. Um, which I'll show you in just a bit once we get the iPad connected. Um, and you can actually adjust the brightness levels of the backlight, which again I'll show you how to do later on in the video. you also see we have a much larger trackpad compared to the previous keyboard. The previous keyboard had a much smaller one which was um, not as easy to perform some of the iPad OS gestures that you can uh, use in iPad OS on a trackpad. But this one is much larger. It's not as large as the MacBook trackpads that you get these days, but it's uh, certainly um, much more usable than before, and it's it's perfectly fine. Um, and I'd say, actually, it's probably a, a much nicer trackpad than um, a lot of Windows PCs, so that's definitely something um, going, going for it. This trackpad is also now a haptic touch trackpad. So as I'm pressing on this, it's... You can probably see the trackpad is moving slightly, however I can't actually feel it clicking. And that's because it now uses a Taptic engine within the keyboard to generate the clicking sensation, just like you have on a MacBook's trackpad. So as soon as you plug the iPad in, you will be able to hear the keyboard, the trackpad uh, clicking and you'll be able to feel it as well. And I will demonstrate that later on in the video. Another thing we've got that's new is this function row at the top. So previously we just ended, it just ended at the uh, number row, but now we've got a full set of function keys, um, which are the typical ones you'd find on a Mac. One that's different is here we have a uh, lock button that will just uh, put the iPad to sleep uh, and lock it. And I believe this one here as well, instead of going into Launchpad as it would on a Mac, this goes into your um, app switcher. So just a couple of different functions there, but generally everything else is the same. Um, as you would find on any modern Apple Silicon based Mac. So I've got my iPad now, um, just here, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up to the keyboard, um, to the case, and it's just going to magnetize and attach just like that, and you feel it click, and it's, uh, it's a nice, um, satisfying connection that's been made. Um, if I turn it on, which I can do by just tapping, uh, pressing any key, it's unlocked with Face ID already, so I can then go and just hit any key and it will take me straight to my home screen or just unlock the iPad. Now, if I turn this to the side, you can see we have our angle adjustment. So when you first open the keyboard, it kind of clicks to that position. And then from there, you can just grab the top and pull this out. And then you've got a range of angles which you can adjust the keyboard to or the iPad screen to. So you do have a, f a good degree of uh, freedom in terms of um, this um, rotation. So you should be able to find, generally speaking, a good angle for wherever you're working. I found an angle that tends to fit, uh, tends to work most of the time for me. Um, sometimes I do wish it could go further back, but on the whole, it tends to be a good amount of adjustability and, and just what you would need uh, in most cases. As I mentioned before, we now have the trackpad working because we've plugged the keyboard in and it's now receiving power. So I don't know if you can hear that, but the trackpad is now clicking, you can hear it, and I can also feel it when I press it. So I'm now just going to play a little um, clip just to compare the on and off states of the trackpad.
I'm going to do next is I'm going to launch notes and I've got a brand new note open here and I'm just going to do a quick um, sound test so you could just so you can hear what this keyboard sounds like to type on. So as you can hear the keyboard does have a nice feel to it and the keys are definitely very um, stable when you're typing on them and they also have a nice amount of travel so you can e easily feel when you've pressed each key and the typing experience is very pleasant. Now in terms of portability, obviously when you add the keyboard to the iPad uh, it does become significantly heavier than um, just the iPad on its own. Um, but if we just close this and take a look at the side profile, you can see that it uh, just about, um, well, it more than doubles the thickness of the iPad. So you can see here, uh, I don't know how well you can see it, but the top um, part here is, top metal section is the iPad with the uh, volume buttons, and the bottom half is the keyboard. And we also have a bit on the top, uh, which is just the back of the keyboard that the iPad attaches to. So you can see overall it is a lot thicker than just the iPad, um, but it is still fairly portable. Um, it's by no means something that is going to be too thick to put in your bag. It's it's definitely a lot thinner than uh, a lot, uh, many books, so it's um, still something that you can carry around. Now before I end this video, I'm going to go and take a look at the settings for the keyboard to show you how you can configure um, some of the hardware features and also um, its behaviour um, in the OS. So if I go to settings and make sure you're on general and then go to where it says keyboard and then so long as the iPad is actually connected to the keyboard you should have this option up here that says hardware keyboard. If I go into that we now have the keyboard settings so at the top here we've just got a list of all the different languages we have set up for the keyboard so you might just have um, one, you might just have English, um, but I've got a few different ones here and for each one of these you can click on it and you can choose the format for the keyboard. So obviously for English you have a variety of different keyboard layouts that you can choose from and it will be the same for any of the other languages you have. You can choose to turn on or off auto capitalization, auto correction and the full stop shortcut. So that's basically where you, if you double press the space bar after, after a word, it will automatically put a full stop in. So if you don't want that, then you can switch it off. You can also configure this um, globe icon. Now, if I take a look at the keyboard, you can see the bottom left here, we have a globe icon. Now, by default, that goes onto the emoji um, keyboard. It switches to the emoji keyboard. However, what you can also do is if you switch this off, you can um, have that button switch between the different languages that you have set up. So you might prefer that if you do regularly switch between multiple languages when typing. Alternatively, you also got switch languages using caps lock keys. So if you tap the caps lock key, it will switch between the last used Latin keyboard and a different language that you have. So that's another way you can have um, to switch between different languages. And beneath that, we've got the keyboard brightness. So this is to do with the backlighting. Now, if I just move the keyboard uh, into view and tilt it this way you can see it's automatically adjusting based on the brightness levels um, but I can manually go here and just drag it up which will increase the keyboard brightness or drag it down and turn it completely off so you should be able to see that there on the on the on the video um, but I just tend to leave it um, to do on it to do what it wants to do on its own based on the brightness I think by default it automatically does it um, based on the ambient light but there is the option if you want to go in and manually do it yourself and then finally we've got modifier keys so these are um, this effectively lets you choose what each of the modifier keys on your keyboard actually does so obviously in terms of modifier keys we have caps lock control option command and the globe key and for each one of these i can choose what it does so if i want the caps lock key for example to actually perform or to act like the option key, I can ch change that here. And I can also change no action. So if perhaps I don't want the caps lock key or maybe the option key to do anything, I, I can set it to do nothing um, if that's what I prefer. And we can also click to restore defaults to get it back to how it was um, from the factory.
But that's my look at the Magic Keyboard for the M4 iPad Pro. If you found this video helpful, then please do hit the thumbs up button. And if you've got any questions or comments, then please do leave them in the comments section of this video. Please do also consider subscribing to the channel and make sure you hit the notification bell icon so you're notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.